I am so thankful today for my family. I'm sure you are, my friends, this church, uh, the kingdom that I'm a part of, of King Jesus. I'm thankful. I'm thankful for my nation. I have some problems, but I'm thankful. I'm thankful for King Jesus who saved me. I'm thankful I'm not going to hell. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. And I'm thankful for a promise of God in his, that, is, uh, that is awesomely described by King David in Psalms 124. It is where I'll start today. If God hadn't been for us, all together now, Israel, sing it out. If God hadn't been for us when everyone went against us, we would have been swallowed up alive by their violent anger, swept away by the flood of rage, drowned in the torrent. We would have lost our lives in the wild, raging water. But oh, blessed be God, he didn't go off and leave us. He didn't abandon us defenseless, helpless as a rabbit in a pack of snarling dogs. We've flown free from their fangs, free of their traps, free as a bird. Their grip is broken. We're free as a bird in flight. God's strong name is our help, the same God who made heaven and earth. At the end of this Thanksgiving week, I am thankful to know the Lord is on our side. He is on the side of his people, the, the one who is all powerful, all knowing, and everywhere at once, the one whose kingdom is supported by an innumerable host of angels, warriors who are committed to the divine purpose of Father God and the purpose of his sons and his daughters. I'm so thankful to know, like any good father, though he is the greatest father, I'm so thankful to know he's on the side of his children. He is on the side of his true church. He's already made up his mind saying, I have redeemed them. They are mine. I am their keeper. I am their rear guard. I am their deliverer, their shield, their buckler, their protector, their strength. I am their shepherd and, and they shall not want. I will never leave them or forsake them. I'll be with them always. I, I have set my love upon them and I am surrounding them with my supernatural favoring grace. I will anoint them with power to overcome their enemies. And I will turn all things for good to them. I'll redeem their adverse situations. I will bend it by my power for their good. Though persecutions and trials may come their way, though the evil one connives to work them woe, I will be a mighty fortress. I will be a bulwark, never failing. I will keep them in all of their ways. I will surround them with my mighty angels. I will surround them with my loving kindness. I'll rain it fresh upon them every single day. I will surround them with songs of deliverance that I myself sing over them. I will activate over them a living hope that anchors their soul. When the winds blow contrary their way, I will show them and I will show their enemies my mighty arms. 
I will make bare my arms for them. I will roll up my sleeves and fight for them. I'll reveal to the whole world I am not an absent papa. I'm an engaged papa. I'm focused. And I, I, I'm a bear when I need to be a bear. I'm a shepherd, a gentle shepherd when I need to be a shepherd. I'll be whatever I need to be for them. I'll be their lion when I need to be their lion. And I will roar against their adversaries. I'll fiercely protect my pride. I'm on their side. David knew this. He, he sings it in this song. David knew this and it anchored his soul in a hope that transcended life's situations. When David was chased from being the chief leader, the chief government leader of Israel, the king of Israel, anointed by the prophet Samuel himself. When that happened, he knew that God was for him. God was on his side. Please know this day that, that it was God's will. It was his unwavering will that David would be the king. He was... He was chosen by God himself telling the prophet Samuel, I want you to go and I want you to pour the holy anointing oil over this young man and make him king. Anoint him to be king. He's the one that I choose. He's my will. But government forces with a demon agenda, said no. No way. Saul, Saul is, is to be king. But God said no. I've rejected him. Nevertheless, Saul and his demon government fought against God's will. And David had to run for his very life. He ran to Adullam and up in the hillsides of Adullam he, he found a cave and he made the cave his, his hideout and he was there for months and he was there all alone. He was there existing in a dark cave all alone and hopelessness he describes himself gripped his soul. He didn't know if his family was alive or dead. Perhaps Saul and his diabolical regime had captured them and would use them for ransom. It was a dark time in their nation. And it was a dark time in David's life. And David writes about those dark Times. I just read one of them to you. David often wrote about those times. 1 Samuel 26, 20, he says, I am hunted like a partridge. Psalms 102, verse 6, he says, I'm like a pelican in the wilderness. Psalms 102, 6 says, I'm like an owl in the desert. Psalms 57, 4 says, my soul, is, my soul is among lions. Psalms 57, 6, he says, they have, a, they have prepared a net for my steps to capture and destroy me. But he also wrote from that cave sitting alone in its haunting darkness. He writes, squinting to see by candlelight. Psalms 91. 
He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He's my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him I will trust. Surely He will deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He will cover you with His feathers and under His wings. You'll take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. Message Bible reads, I sat down in the high God's presence. I spend the night under El Shaddai's shadow. And I say this, God, you're my refuge. I, I trust in you and I am safe. That's right. He rescues you from hidden traps, shields you from deadly hazards, his huge outstretched arms protect you. Under them, you're perfectly safe. His arms fend off all harm. Fear nothing. Not wild wolves in the night. Not flying arrows in the day. Not disease that prowls through the darkness. Not disaster that erupts at high noon. Even though others succumb all around, drop like flies right and left. No harm will even graze you. You'll stand untouched and watch it all from a distance. And I'll, uh, you'll watch the wicked turn into corpses. Hmm. Yes, because God is your refuge. The high God... Your very own home, evil can't get close to you. Harm can't get through the door. He ordered his angels to guard you wherever you go. And if you humble or you, if you stumble, they, they'll, they'll catch you. Their job is to keep you from falling. <laughs> You'll walk unharmed among lions and snakes and kick young lions and serpents from the path. If you'll hold on to me for dear life, God says, I'll get you out of any trouble and I'll give you the best of care. If you'll only get to know me and trust me, call. No, answer. I'll be at your side in bad times. I'll rescue you. Then I'll throw you a party. I'll give you a long life and give you a long drink of salvation. David kept on trusting the living God. Though it was dark all around him, though it looked like it was over. Well, after a while, David's daddy, Jesse, began to send his brothers and, and some of David's friends who were warriors to go try to find him. And one of those warriors, we're not sure which one, remembered a cave they found in the hillsides of Adullam, and he went and checked. And he found David in the, that hideout cave. And it was the beginning of an awesome turnaround. In just a few days, they, they snuck his family to the cave to be with him. His daddy and, and his brothers, his seven brothers, they, they came and the word began to leak out through the hills. David's been found. They found him. Amazingly, God's people who were hiding also in the hills and the caves and the dens of the forest from Saul's brutal government, from his witchcraft, 
His defilement of God's ways through his, his rebellion. From, from that wicked king Saul's vicious temper. From his killing of the priests, the prophets, the religious leader. Those in the hidings of the hillside, they, they heard the news. David's been found. And they begin to talk amongst themselves. We've got to go get him out of the cave. He's got to leave and he's got to go back. And he's got to reign as God has intended. He must reign according to the will of the living God. Those people that were hiding in the dens and the caves of the forest were called by Saul and his government in 1 Samuel 22, the misfits. Here are some other definitions or of other translations. They were called the misfits, but they were also sometimes called the discontented. Other translations, the distressed ones. Others, the debtors. Some, the losers, some vagrants, some the lowlifes, others the hapless ones, the, the unfortunate ones. Well, these misfits left their hiding places and they went to David's hideout. Also, some of David's army that had been scattered they also came, about 400 of them showed up. And these deplorables escorted David out of the cave. And with God doing miracles and God's angels assisting, they escorted David to the throne of government power according to the will of the living God. There is no doubt in my mind God can do it again. We may be flyover people. We may be deplorables to the so-called elite. But we are not gutless. We are not cowards. We trust our God and we will stand for his will no matter what and we know it is not his will for those who will murder a baby on the day it's to be born to rule over us we know it that is not his will and anyone who says it is his will is a liar. You cannot say if it's God's will for his people to submit and embrace what is not his will. That's crazy. It's mystifyingly dumb. Hear that, you fake prophets that dare prophesy the voice of Baal into this nation and declare you are Christians. Hear that, you false prophets like Balaam who are prophesying stumbling blocks to the will of Almighty God and causing God's people to sin in their unbelief. Hear that, you hypocrite leaders who dare ascribe God's will to the mess we're in. You are blind leaders of the blind. You're the present day Pharisees who defy God's will and agenda for your own. Twice dead, plucked up by the roots. It's time to leave the gutless wonders and come out of hiding and serve with boldness the king and his will on this planet. There's no time for faint-hearted Christianity. In fact, it's never been time for faint-hearted Christianity. 
Four years ago when Prophet Chuck Pierce gave us a gold stake and prophesied, activate angels. To go into our nation and cause chaos and commotion, revealing the pollution and the corruption in our government. When that happened four years ago, I don't think we understood how deep the corruption was. I think we thought, well, we'll give it a month or two, get a new guy in there, and it'll all be okay. We didn't understand it was systemic. It's in both political parties. It's in the media. It's in education. It's in big tech. It's in the states and their governments. It's in the DOJ, the CIA, and the FBI. It's in the governor's offices. It's in the mayor's offices. And God and his angels are still tearing off the band-aids and revealing the corruption. They're still revealing the demonic infection. But the promise was, if we will battle through it, we will reconnect America to its covenant roots and the greatest revival in history will roll through the land. We are in that battling through process right now. And we must be a people that refuse, we refuse to give up on God's will. We can and we will reconnect this nation to its covenant roots. Hear this, Lucifer, and your entire kingdom. You're not big enough to stop us. America will be saved. America will turn around. Great harvest is coming. You can't stop us. You're one of the weakest angels now that exists. Your destiny is to be forever lost. We can and we will see awakening and reformation and revival. I don't know how long it takes, but I believe what God says. And though the corruption attempting to delay it is far greater than we knew, it's far greater than I knew, I'm glad I know God is on our side. And if God be for us, who can be a success against us? Sure, they'll try, but we happen to be a part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. This past week, I, I was busy traveling doing national prayer assemblies with Dutch and several other men and women who are warriors. But at the end of that, returning home, I began to pray something like this. Lord, We're having to fight like never before. I've never been in a spiritual battle this big. We're having false prophets causing confusion and, and speaking against our efforts. We have the media causing confusion, Lord. It's just rampant. We have an election that is fraudulent and will take us just exactly away from your plan and your will if we do not stand. I said, Lord, the enemy's deception is entrenched. It's, it's, it's deep. They, they've hidden votes. They, they've changed votes. They've added phantom fake votes. They've rigged computers. They've discarded votes. 
I said, Lord, you've called us to pray into these contested states where fraud is rampant. And at your word, we, we have done so. I said, Lord, I don't see how we can ever get an accurate count. I said, we're not asking you to change one vote, God. Just want the votes to be accurate. Whoever wins, fine. I said, Lord, we turned out millions of the remnant to turn this nation back to your will and purpose. And Lord, I know we won. I know we did. But it's such a mess, Lord. How can we ever know the real vote? I prayed these things, and I heard the Lord speak to me. And when he spoke, it was like a, a shot of faith went into me. Was it really all that revelatory? Not really. But it was filled with his life. It was filled with his presence. As he simply said, crystal clear. He said, I know the exact vote. Just stand for my will. Your obedience will matter. Somehow those words, I know the exact vote, infused confidence in me. I think it was, it, it was just his voice. I heard his voice, and I knew he was engaged, and I knew whose side he's on. Now, of course, I, I know he knows the exact vote. He knows the hair on your head, how many there. And somehow, the ecclesia, the radical remnant, will reconnect this nation to its covenant roots. Somehow, awakening, reformation, and revival will roll through this nation and around this world. And God, God was letting me know afresh, I'm on my sons and daughters' side. I'm on my church's side. Keep standing You'll watch things bend. I'll turn everything for good. Keep going. Somehow it'll all turn for good. Somehow I'll turn the ugly and I'll make it lovely. Just keep standing however long it takes. Singers and musicians, come. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? He kept my enemies away let the sun shine through the clouded day he wrapped me in the cradle of his arms when he knew I was battered and torn oh if it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be? Where would you be? Where would you be? Where would we be? His love, His grace, His compassion, His care.
It's available and He's for us. And it goes back a little over 2,000 years ago when he made a decision sitting around a table. The world's going the wrong way. The wages of sin is death. There's none righteous. No, not one. But I've come to earth to be on their side. To give them life that's abundant. To die for their sins. So that they can be with me and my will can be accomplished in their lives. I'm for them. I'm for their freedom. I'm for their deliverance. I'm for their... Their destinies, I'm, I'm, I'm there for them. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll die. We come to that table today after a week of thanksgiving for many blessings. We come today knowing the abundant mercies of God are fresh every single day. We come today knowing His love is unconditional. Simply put, He just loves you. He'll love you all the time and He'll never stop. How could we not be thankful? And so we come to that table today to give Him thanks for all that He's done and all that He's going to do.